That's right, that's boom supersonic, moving faster than the speed of sound to get its passenger jet production underway. The company is breaking ground at PTI for their new facility this year, and they hope to carry passengers in their aircraft by 2029. We're digging into what will take place at Boom's factory here in Greensboro, what a supersonic flight is, and how Boom plans to make those flights accessible for you. So right now, Boom Supersonic is making big news with its latest commercial airline deal. American Airlines agreed to buy up to 20 of the Overture jets, which will be made right here in the Triad. They also have the option to purchase 40 more of those jets. What we're seeing here is further proof that supersonic flight isn't just something that passengers are excited about, but Overture, that supersonic airliner, is something that works for airlines too, economically, financially, strategically. And ultimately, I think we're going to find that you know, every major international airline is going to find that their passengers want supersonic flight, and we're seeing building momentum in that direction. Well, this is the second major airline to buy the high-speed planes from Boom. United bought 15 Overture jets with the option to buy another 35. And with demand growing for these supersonic jets, it could mean more jobs opening up in the triad. Over the next decade, uh, it could be 2,400 jobs in Greensboro, and that's you know with one final assembly line operating. Now, uh, that first final assembly line is designed to do 33 airplanes per year. And like I said, we've already got 130 airplanes in orders and pre-orders, and we're just getting started. So we might need to build a second assembly line, which, of course, would be even better uh, in terms of the amount of jobs we can create. They're going to call it a super factory in Greensboro. They'll have the final assembly line there, the test facility, and a customer delivery center for the Overture. It will be about 400,000 square feet on 65 acres at PTI. And not only are they planning to hire those thousands of workers, they also plan to offer hundreds of internships for North Carolina students. But before they can get to that production part, Boom Supersonic will make a life-size model of its Overture jet, and they'll use it to test all the aircraft systems to make sure that the first time their technology does fly, it flies safely. This Iron Bird model won't be in North Carolina. Instead, it will be at a facility in Denver, where Boom Supersonic is headquartered. Once testing is done there, it will then move production to the Triad. Now, for the supersonic jet makers, they need for safety to be top of mind. And there's a reason why, along with images of just how much destruction these planes can cause if not made properly. Now, this is the Concorde. It was the world's first supersonic passenger plane. Its first flight was in 1969, and supersonic passenger flight on the Concorde started in 1976. The plane was expensive to make, and its sonic booms were so loud, it was banned from many overland routes. Only 20 Concorde jets were built, 14 were used for passenger service. The plane's darkest day came July 25, 2000. An Air France Concorde crashed into a hotel and exploded shortly after takeoff. All 109 people on board and four people on the ground were killed. Investigators determined that a tire on the Concorde was damaged and a piece of it hit the plane's fuel tank, causing it to rupture. All Concords were grounded for 18 months for expensive modifications. Flights eventually resumed, but it just was not enough. British Airways and Air France stopped service of the plane in 2003. All right, so Boom Supersonic is giving us a new chapter. Barry Peterson gives us a look at what's happening up at the company's Denver headquarters. At the moment, America's first supersonic passenger jet is still a dream. The plane has a name, Overture, and a developer, Denver-based Boom Supersonic. But it also has a secret weapon. So it looks like a bigger version of this. So CEO Blake Scholl turning that dream into real-life timelines. Will you be flying in a supersonic jet by age 50, 10 years from now? Oh, yeah, for sure. You think? 100%. Why are you so confident? Well, I know how we're getting there. Scholl and his venture capitalist backers have already funded and built the XB-1 to test a design that will include using only sustainable biofuels. Successful test flights next year could lead to airliner production. And Scholl has no doubt that his pint-sized seven-year-old startup can reshape world aviation.
I think people would have laughed at you more until recently when we saw Richard Branson and Jeff Bezos go off into space as private companies. Is that a model for you for success? Uh, I'm incredibly inspired by what's been accomplished at SpaceX and Blue Origin and Virgin Galactic. Sometimes the most important breakthroughs come from folks who have the benefit of a fresh perspective from coming from outside the industry. And United Airlines isn't laughing. It's ordered 15 supersonic jets with options for 35 more. Its first flights will be Newark to London, which now takes about seven hours. The supersonic jet will do it in about three and a half. An overseas business trip could be done in a single day. And that's what customers want, says Michael Leskinen, president of United Airlines Ventures. The difference will be that we won't have lie flat seats. Um, and we don't need lie flat seats because we're gonna be getting our customers back home to their own beds. In terms of validating or encouraging this dream, how important is it that you have a client like, say, United Airlines that says, if you build it, we'll buy it? Uh, absolutely critical. And I think it really speaks to the, the renaissance and high-speed flight that's happening here. I don't know a single passenger who doesn't want to arrive in half the time. Three dial flaps are full, hook is up, his kit is on, and dispenser is off. The first step is getting the prototype XB1 into the air, and that is test pilot Bill Shoemaker's job. He flew Navy supersonic jet fighters for 15 years. He turned over his simulator seat to me. And then just slide in? And I went from never flying a plane in my life. Oh, down and up. Breaking the sound barrier with one push of the throttle. You're at 35,500 feet, so that's great. Good altitude. You're now at Mach 0.94, 0.95, 0.97, 0 0.98, 99, and you just went supersonic. So you can see. So I just broke the sound barrier. You did. For me, as it will be for future passengers, there is no sensation when going supersonic. So if I'm a passenger in a supersonic jet and it goes to Mach 1 or Mach 2, I don't feel it doesn't even rattle my drink. You might not even notice. Hit it! But Shoal wants more than just flying faster. Okay, now. Your vision goes beyond that, though, because you think that you ought to have a plane where for 100 bucks, I can go from New York to London. Why? What is it you're trying to accomplish by bringing the world that much closer together? Well, I deeply believe a world in which more people go more places more often, it's a better world for us to live in, a better world for our children to grow up in. And imagine what it would be like if instead of reading about other cultures and textbooks and YouTube videos, if our kids instead were able to visit other peoples, break bread with them, experience our shared humanity. What does that do for the future of the planet, the future of our cultures? I think that's tremendously important. So buckle up. America's supersonic jet age is just one man's dream away. All right, well, let's take a look. Here are the next steps to get the Overture plane in the air. Production will start in Greensboro in 2024. In 2025, Boom will start rolling out its planes. 2026, we'll hopefully see some supersonic flights. No passengers on board until 2029. It'll be here before you know it.